Hi, this is Michael Behrens. It's April 3rd, 2021, and I'm standing on Pines and Prairies Billig Ranch conservation property. Pines and Prairies Land Trust is having a wild and scenic film festival outdoors on this, uh, on this Billig Ranch property. I'm gonna be uh, leading the bird walk tomorrow morning. I'm so excited to be here. It's been way too long since I've been able to, to get out to some place new I've never been. And I'm camping. It's car camping, but I'm camping. And it's at a beautiful spot that all the wide open space here, I think you could see as I turned around a little bit, they have designated camp spots for the people participating in this event. I am so excited to be out here. There are cardinals singing and there's a white-eyed vireo nearby. There uh, are monarch butterflies uh, uh, feeding on the blooming dewberries around me. And there are pine trees. I'm under pine trees. I'm camping under pine trees tonight. I can't believe it. After so much time indoors lately, this is gonna be an awesome night and morning tomorrow morning. Hope I can share some of it with you. Here's the first perch dragonfly I've been able to find on Billig Ranch. And I believe it's one of the club tails, the Gomphid, Gomphid family. And I'm not sure which at this point. I might uh, have to look it up when I get home able to get a little closer to this dragonfly. Look at those long spiny legs. Dragonflies catch prey, insect prey out of the air with their legs. And some hunt from a perch and some hunt while flying. This one luckily is one that hunts from a perch. Most of the club tails are. If I had to guess I'd say this is an eastern ringtail. But um, again I'll have to Wait and look that up when I get home. Here's a returning scissor tail flycatcher, a beautiful, exotic looking summer resident in central Texas and Oklahoma. In fact, it's the Oklahoma State Bird. And this is only the second one I've seen returning this, se this season. First one was on the drive out here. You can see the uh, long tail where it gets its name, scissor-tailed flycatcher. I heard a couple pips early on, earlier. As I'm watching this scissor-tailed flycatcher, I'm hearing, and I briefly saw a second one, and I'm hearing a cardinal singing. Occasionally makes those little pips. Probably a contact call. It's so cool to see this returning bird. This tiny damselfly caught my eye. I think it's what uh, I think it's a citrine fork tail. This is near one of the ponds on the Billig Ranch. And this is one that there, this is a, damselflies are odinates like dragonflies. They're related, um, but they're a little bit different. The damselflies usually hold their wings folded back like this instead of spread out like dragonflies do. And this is one of the small, this is one of the smaller damselflies. And so I'm glad it caught my eye. And that yellow is really catching the sun. Neat little bug. This is a little better angle, a little closer to the citrine fork-tailed damselfly that I discovered by the, by the pond. Cleaning 
it's cleaning its eyes or something there. With its front legs. You can just barely see some stripes on the eyes. Both dragonflies and damselflies are so photogenic. Really neat when you get them up close. Before the sun set, it was great to go on a tour of a couple of the fields under different stages of restoration led by Melanie Pavlos, the director of Pines and Prairie. And it's just awesome being out there. Look at the view. And as the, as the sun set, we got set up and ready to watch uh, the uh, seven or eight short uh, nature and conservation themed uh, videos as part of the Wild and Scenic uh, Film Festival on an outdoor inflatable screen. It was a beautiful night, awesome experience all around. This is Michael Barron's Sunday, April 4th, waking up. It's around 7 a.m. on the Billy Ranch, the morning after the Wild and Scenic Film Festival hosted by Pines and Prairies Land Trust on their Billy Ranch property. We got to camp out afterwards, and in about an hour, I'm going to lead a group bird walk as part of the uh, part of the festival. And uh, I had a great night sleeping in my tent for the first time in way too long. And uh, I was really excited. I was surprised I did not hear any owls through the night. Uh, no screech owls, no great horned, uh, no barred. And uh, this morning, gosh, about before 6.30 a.m., I started hearing a few distant cardinals. And I'm, that's what I'm hearing mostly now. Our northern cardinals is the dawn, part of the dawn chorus. But about a little after 6.30, I started hearing a <whistles> and I realized that's a whippoorwill. It's an eastern whippoorwill, not one of our uh, summer resident uh, uh, Chuckwill's widows. And so that, that made up for it. I think that bird, whippoorwills, are on their way north right now. So that was not a uh, resident bird. And that's why I didn't hear it through the night. I just heard it that one, uh, just a few times, three or four times, uh, between about 6.30 and 6.40 this morning from inside my tent. And uh, that made up for, uh, that made up for not hearing any owls or uh, uh, anything else. That, that might be my, my favorite bird of the, of the camping trip here. Courtney Young with uh, Pines and Prairies spotted this hovering bird. Turns out it's a white-tailed kite. I'm going to try to see if I can get a closer view of it. Just before I was about to head back to my campsite to pack up and, and leave, uh, I was talking to Courtney Young uh, with Pines and Prairie, and she said, oh, what's that bird hovering over there? And I looked over and it was a white-tailed kite hovering over the field. And uh, I was, uh, so I, I changed my plans and, and tried to get closer and got some picture, distant pictures and saw where it landed. And uh, here I am uh, taking some video through my spotting scope of the perched white-tailed kite. And you see it's a, it's a beautiful bird, black and white. And uh, if I can get close enough, maybe we can see that it's red eyes. It's really, uh, it's really a, an unexpected treat to get to see this uh, this bird here. I, I don't know if it's expected out here in Bastrop County. It might be considered rare out here. It's more of a coastal bird. As you get start to get closer to the Texas coast, you might see one of these. They're they're very elegant birds of prey, falcon like. Um, but they, uh, I think the the name kite comes from their buoyant flight and they they like to to hover as they uh as they hunt sometimes so this was just wow it's an unexpected uh 
treat on par with hearing the whippoorwill from my tent this morning before dawn. I'm really excited to see this bird. I'll see if I can get a little bit closer for some, uh, some better footage. I got a little too close. It got a little spooked. Look at those black patches on the wings. Beautiful. Well, I tried getting a little too close to that white-tailed kite and uh, spooked it and it flew off uh, to another spot in the field. I think it's perched like in the tree right about here and I'm out of time. I can't go chase it. I hope the uh, pictures and a little bit of video footage I got uh, come out okay. But even if not, it was awesome seeing that bird and uh, it was flagged by eBird as unusual, but not, not rare, so they are expected here. Uh, but wow, what a, what a thrill for me, the, hearing the whippoorwill, seeing a white-tailed kite, and um, leading my first group bird walk since the pandemic. Hope I, can, uh, hope, hope I can lead a few more in the future. And look at that beautiful view behind me. It was so awesome to be able to visit this uh, Billig Ranch, uh, uh, owned by uh, Pines and Prairies Land Trust. Uh, what a treat to come out here in beautiful, cool weather and um, share it with everybody.